This girl literally lived a nightmare. A 17-year-old girl was watching TV late at night when her motion detector lights in her driveway suddenly went on. She assumed it was just an animal, so she got up, drew the blinds, and went back to watching TV. Then a little bit later, it happened again. Before she could even react, she looks over and clearly makes out a silhouette of a person right behind the blinds who starts banging aggressively on the window. The girl stands up and goes, I'm gonna call the cops! And the figure stops for just a second, sprints to the side door and starts pounding even louder on that, screaming incoherently. The girl runs to the bathroom, barricades herself inside while she waits for the police, and then her worst nightmares come true. She hears glass shatter in the other room. After a few minutes of silence, she opens her door just a crack to get a peek outside, and standing in her living room next to a broken window is some crazy old woman who looks over at her and starts sprinting toward her. The lady comes smashing into the door and starts wailing on it until the police arrive and take her away. She was a lunatic who had escaped her facility. If you scare easily, swipe on. In 1989, a woman started hearing strange banging sounds in her walls and in the ceiling. And then one night, the crawl space to her attic was open, so she went to go have a look. When she's just feet away, an old man suddenly appears in the crawl space and looks her dead in the eye before vanishing. There was nobody else in the house. Worried no one's going to take her seriously over an apparent ghost in her house, she ends up calling a paranormal investigator. When the paranormal crew arrived, they were actually very skeptical until they heard loud banging in the attic and they decided to go up and have a look. As soon as the two men get up into the attic, one of them screams and suddenly disappears. The other, who didn't have a flashlight, starts using the flash on his camera to illuminate the attic and he takes one of the most famous pictures in paranormal history. His partner, who was in total shock, had been lifted off the ground and tied to one of the beams. That was the last night the woman ever stayed in the house. However, it's still being rented out today, but nobody stays longer than one or two months. I was not ready for the ending to this one. In the early 2010s, two 15-year-old friends were camping in a state forest with their families. One night, the friends decide they want to go explore the woods around their campsite, but they want to see how far they can get without using a flashlight. A little ways into their trip, they start to hear some whispering behind them, and they quickly turn around, pull out their flashlights, and start looking for what was making the sound. After a short search, they don't find anything, and so even though they're a little bit freaked out, they decide to put their flashlights away and carry on into the woods. After a little while, they start to hear the whispering again. So they pull out their flashlights. Now they're determined to find out what the heck is making this sound. They do a very thorough search. They don't find anything, and at this point, they're too freaked out, and they decide to start heading back. As they start retracing their steps, they see what was making the sound. A woman comes out from behind a tree, crawling towards them, muttering random words. She sees them, stands up, and says, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking for my campsite. They're a half mile from the nearest campsite. Really weird human body facts I can guarantee you didn't know. This one depends on you a little bit, but the average human body has enough fat in it to make over seven bars of soap. If you lose your hand and then get it reattached, even if all mobility and feeling comes back, no matter what you do, the skin on that hand will never get wrinkly in water ever again. It just loses that ability. Us women are actually programmed to forget the pain of childbirth a few months after it happens. This is why we continue to have kids. We're like, oh my God, that was traumatic and so painful. I never want to do that again. And our body's like, nah, forget about it. Believe it or not, this is a well-documented, true story. In 1947, an American ship picked up a horrifying distress signal coming from an unidentified vessel. The first transmission was all officers, including the captain, are dead. The next transmission was the whole crew is dead. The last transmission was I die, and then silence. The Americans trace the signal back to a ship that's drifting off in the middle of the Indian Ocean. They quickly assemble a rescue team who boards the ship. They find the entire crew has perished in the exact same position. They are on their backs with their hands up as if fighting with some unseen force, and they look like this. There was no physical damage to the bodies or to the ship itself. However, even though it was 100 degrees outside, it was 40 degrees on the ship, and the bodies were rapidly decomposing. As soon as they tie up the ship to tow it in, it explodes, and then it sinks. To this day, no one knows what happened inside of that ship. Some say it was a chemical leak. Others aren't so sure. The crazy part is, most people believe that these three things will actually save your life. They don't. Let's pretend you're at the ATM and this guy comes up behind you with a knife. He demands that you pull out as much money as you can and give it to him. But you remember that if you just punch in your ATM code backwards, it will still give you cash and it will tell the authorities that you're being robbed. Except that's a myth. And all you end up doing is locking your account, making your attacker that much more suspicious of you. And so what does he do? He gets ready to actually attack you. But what do you do? 
You remember that you're a karate master, and so of course you're going to fight back. And so while you're getting in your stance, he just instantly stabs you. Because disarming someone with a knife is so hard to do, even if you're experienced at it. It's like trying to disarm a child who's got an uncapped marker without getting marker on you. It ain't going to happen. So now you're stabbed, but you remember, I can just yank this bad boy out and apply pressure and be fine. But that's not true. You bleed to death. Crazy part is, most people believe that these three things will actually save your life. They don't. Let's pretend you're lost in the desert and you need water and you don't have any. So where are some places you can get water? One commonly held terrible piece of advice is to drink your own pee because it's mostly made up of water, except there's 5% of that that's all made up of just waste from your body. And even though the urine might keep you alive a little bit longer, you'll ultimately die of kidney failure. So you don't drink your own pee. Instead, you head over to some cactus you see nearby because you remember reading or hearing in school that you can drink the water inside of cactus. Except unless it's one really specific kind of cactus, you'll be drinking lots of alkaloids and chemicals that will make you vicious ill and you'll start vomiting and you'll have diarrhea and you'll die from dehydration much faster. So as you're sitting there wondering what you're going to do next, a venomous snake bites you. And so you instinctively start sucking on the bite to remove the poison, but you can't because it goes right in your bloodstream and all you'll do is die much faster from infection. So yesterday, me and my wife were just chilling on the couch and all of a sudden I get a text message from my neighbor John. So I opened the text message and it was so disgusting, I wrote it down so I can read it to you guys. This is what it said. Hey, Andreas, it's your neighbor, John, and I've been feeling so guilty lately that I haven't been able to sleep, and I think it's time to confess. I've been helping myself to your wife when you're at work probably more than you do. It's so incredible and so fun, and I haven't been able to contain myself. Sometimes it goes on for hours. I know it's no excuse, but I don't get any at my house. Anyway, I apologize, and it won't happen again. So I read the message to my wife, and I look at her, and I go, You are a disgusting, cheating tramp. I never want to see you again in my life. I want a divorce and you, you are nasty, you are grimy, you are disgusting. I don't want to see you again. So right before my wife went to speak, I get another text message from John. So I open the message, it says, shit, I really hate autocorrect. I meant to say Wi-Fi. These are pretty cool, but it's the plot twist at the end that's going to get you. You wake up stranded on a deserted island, and now you need to go find drinkable water. So where are some places we can find that? You look around the island and you notice a whole bunch of coconut trees. And you think, well, people drink coconut water, I'll just drink that until they get rescued. Except if you only drink coconut water and don't supplement it with another water source, you will develop wicked diarrhea and will die of dehydration. So you start looking for an alternative source of water. And you remember from that documentary about cannibals that it is safe to drink your own blood. So you cut your arm open, you start drinking your own blood, but what you fail to understand is only in small doses is that okay. Beyond a couple teaspoons and you'll develop something called hemochromatosis, which results in your lungs filling with fluid and you basically drown from the inside out. One time I was behind the register at Victoria's Secret. This customer walks in and immediately everybody spots her as a red flag. She's just picking up items, throwing them in her bag, not looking at sizes, not looking at colors. So everybody's like, mm. everyone's on their walkie like. Watch this customer. She's coming to the fitting room. She's headed to the cash shop. Somebody get her. Check her ID. Get her. Get her. She has a bag full of stuff. And guess who gets her at the register? Me. So she comes to my register and she dumps out her stuff and you know we're having a regular conversation. Hi, how are you? Yada yada yada. Her total comes up to probably between $700 to $900. It was expensive. My manager is at the register next to me talking to me on the walkie. Ashley, make sure you get that ID. Don't matter what she using, make sure you get that ID. So I ask her for the ID because she's paying credit. Why do you need to ask for my ID? Just take it. Run it. I'm like, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. I need your ID for the purchase. She starts to raise her voice at me. Man escapes prison after 15 years, then breaks into a house to look for money. He finds a couple in bed, orders the guy out of bed, and ties him to a chair. The escaped prisoner then ties the wife to the bed and jumps on top of her, and it looks like he kissed her, then gets up and goes to the bathroom and closes the door. While he's in the bathroom, the husband whispers over to his wife, Hey, he's an escaped convict. Look at his clothes. He's probably spent a lot of time in jail and hasn't seen a woman in years. I saw the way he kissed your neck. If he wants anything, don't resist, don't complain, just go with it. Satisfy him no matter what. This guy is obviously dangerous, and if he gets angry, he'll kill us both. Be strong, honey, and I love you. His wife looks at him, smiles, and says, He wasn't kissing my neck. He was whispering in my ear. He told me that he likes men and thinks you're cute and asked me where the Vaseline was. I told him it was in the bathroom. Be strong, honey, and I love you.
A father was listening to his daughter pray. God bless mommy. God bless daddy. God bless grandma. Goodbye, grandpa. Honey, why did you say goodbye, grandpa? I don't know, daddy. It just felt right. The next day, her grandpa dies, and the father just thought it was a strange coincidence. A week later, the dad was listening to his daughter pray again. God bless mommy. God bless daddy. Goodbye, grandma. The next day, the grandma died. The father started thinking, wow, my daughter must be very special. A week later, he was listening to his daughter pray again. God bless mommy. Goodbye, daddy. He started freaking out and couldn't sleep all night. He left early and went to his office. He was nervous all day and kept watching the clock. He felt safe in his office and figured if he could make it to midnight, he would be okay. Once it hit midnight, he went home. When he went home, his wife said, I've never seen you work so late. What's the matter? I had the worst day of my life. Yeah, well, my day was worse. The mailman dropped dead on our porch.